Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Now I will solve uh, these two problems, right? So these two problems are related to each other, so we can solve both of these together, right? So in the problem it is said that the screw I is subjected to the two forces shown. Express each force in Cartesian vector form and then determine the resultant for, uh, force and it is said that find the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant right so first i will uh, represent i will write the cartesian vectors of f1 and f2 and then in this problem it is said that determine the coordinate direction angles of f1 the coordinate direction angles of f2 are given that is 60 45 and 120 degrees are given so to solve these both of these problems first what i will do is that i will write the cartesian vector form of f1 and then i will find the coordinate direction angles of f1 and after that i will uh, i will write this f2 as a cartesian vector and then i at the end i will find the resultant of f1 and f2 and the coordinate direction angles of the resultant right so to write f1 as a cartesian vector we can write f1 vector and f1 vector is equal to we can write that it is equal to f1 magnitude times the unit vector along f1 and further we can write that f1 x in terms of the components we can write f1 vector like this f1 x i plus f1 y j plus f1 z k right so to write f1 as a cartesian vector we have to find f1 x f1 y and f1 z right the components of f1 along x y and z axis is so for f1 we are given this 60 degree f1 is making 60 degree with the x y plane right so we can resolve this f1 into its components right so it will have uh, this component and this red component is uh, lying in the x y plane so let's say that this red component is f1 dash and if we consider this light uh, blue triangle f1 dash is the cos component since the angle of f1 is made with this f1 dash so we can write that f1 dash is 300 cos of 60 degree and as we can see that further we can resolve this f1 into other two components right so this f1 dash will have one component in this direction that is in the y direction and since f1 dash is the component of f1 so we can write that this is f1 y and similarly this f1 dash will have one component like this and this component is acting in the negative x direction right if i place it here so it is parallel to the x axis is right so this is we can write that this is f1 x right so from this dark blue triangle we can say that f1 y is the cos component and f1 dash is making 45 degrees with the y axis is right so if I write f1, so we can write f1 vector equals to f1 x. So f1 x is the uh, component of f dash, right? So we can write that f, this is f dash uh, sine of 45, right? This is f dash sine of 45. This is f1 x, right? And since f1 x is acting in the negative x direction, so we will write minus sine with it. So this is minus i. And as we can see that f1 y is, we can write this f1 y as f dash cos of 45 degrees since the angle is made with uh, the y axis is right. So f1 y is the cos component of f, f1 dash, right. So we can write that, we can write plus and it is acting in the positive y direction. So we will write plus j with it, right. So this is, this is f1 dash. So we will write f1 dash cos of 45 degrees. And this is acting in the positive j direction similarly if i draw the component of f1 like this right so this is the component which is parallel to the positive z axis and it is acting in the positive z direction right so we can if we consider this light blue triangle so this f1 z is the sine component right so we can write that this is f1 sine of 60 degrees right so we can write here as plus and this is f1 sine of 60 degrees and this is acting in the positive k direction right so now we can write uh, we can put f1 dash and f1 magnitude right so this is f1 vector minus and f1 dash is 300 cos of 60 so this is 300 
cos of 60 sin of 45 i and again plus and f1 dish is again 300 cos of 60. So, I will write 300 cos of 60 cos of 45 degree this is 60 right and I will write plus and f1 magnitude is 300 right. So, this is 300 sin of 60 and this is in the positive k direction right. So, now if I take uh, 300 common from all of these so f1 vector I can write that this is 300 minus cos of 60 sin of 45 i plus cos of 60 cos of 45 and this is in the positive j right. So, we have to write j with it. So, this is j and this is sin of 60 k right. So, we can simplify this if we can say that this is the, the magnitude of f 1 this is the magnitude of f 1 and everything written, written in this bracket is the unit vector along f 1 right. So, we can say we can say that this whole thing in the bracket is this is the unit vector along the f 1 direction and this is f 1 magnitude right. So, now uh, we are required to determine the coordinate direction angle. So, we can simplify this we can write this as uh, f 1 this is 300. So, now when we simplify this this is minus uh, cos of 60 sin of 45. So, this is equal to minus 0 0.534. So, minus 0 0.534 i and similarly this is a uh, cos of 60 cos of 45 so this is a uh, plus 0 0.354 0 0.354 j and plus sine of 60 so sine of 60 sine of 60 is 0 0.866 0 0.866 k right and as we know that everything written inside this bracket is uh, is the unit vector along f1 and we can write that these are the uh, these values are the cos of alpha if if i compare it with the standard form so we can write f1 as a vector so this will be f1 magnitude and we can write that this is cos of alpha i plus cos of beta j plus cos of gamma k right. So, if we compare both of these right if I compare this with the standard form. So, then this is this uh, fraction is cos of alpha this fraction is cos of beta and this fraction is cos of gamma right. So, <clears throat> In this part, we are required to find the coordinate direction angles of f1, right? So, we can name these alpha, beta as alpha 1, beta 1 and gamma 1 for f1, right? So, now we can write that cos of alpha 1 equals to minus 0 0.534 and if you want to find alpha 1, so then we can take cos inverse, right? So, cos inverse this thing. Similarly, beta 1 will be cos inverse this 0 0.354. And similarly, gamma 1 will be cos inverse 0 0.866, right. So, this one is incorrect, this is 0 0.354, right. So, this is 0 0.354. So, this is uh, cos inverse 0 0.354 and with negative sign, right, the minus. So, this is 110.73, this is 110.73 degrees. Similarly, beta 1, so this is cos inverse and positive 0 0.353, this is 69.27, right. So, 69.27 degrees and similarly, gamma 1. So, gamma 1 is uh, cos inverse 0 0.866. So, this is 30 right. So, we will write that this is 30 degrees right. So, alpha 1, beta 1 and gamma 1 are the direction cosine angles of f 1 right. So, we have solved 
uh, this 266 problem, right? So, now to solve this 265 problem, uh, we will require this f1 as a Cartesian vector and uh, these are the answers of this problem, right? So, I have kept this on the side of the screen, right? So, that you people, uh, if you people want to write it or copy it, so it is here, right? So, alpha 1, beta 1 and gamma 1 are the coordinate direction angles of f1, right? So, now uh, for f2, uh, we are given all the coordinate direction angles for f2 we are given this is alpha 2 we can write that this is alpha 2 for f2 this is beta 2 and this 120 is gamma 2 now f2 cartesian vector this is equal to magnitude so magnitude is 500 and we can write that this is cos of alpha 2 so cos of alpha 2 so cos of 60i plus cos of beta 2, the so cos of 45 j and plus cos of 120 k, right. So, we can write f 2, this is 500 and cos of 60, we can write cos of 60, uh, cos of 60 is 0.5 plus cos of 45, so cos of 45 is 0 0.707, 0 0.707 j and this will be cos of 120 is uh, negative 0 0.5, cos of 120 negative 0 0.5 right. So, this is minus 0 0.5 k right. So, now to find the resultant we need to add uh, all the components right. So, first let me simplify this. So, this is a 2 vector. So, this is 500 into 0.5. So, this will be 250 i plus 500 into 0.707 500 into 0 0.707. So, this is uh, 353 we can write it as 354 j and this is again a minus 250 k and let me write f1 in simplified form as well right so f1 vector so i will multiply this 300 with this right so 300 into 300 multiply by minus 0 0.354 so this is minus 106 minus 106 i this is plus 106 j and this is plus 300 into 0 0.866, 0.866. So, this is 260, right. So, this is plus 260k. Now, to find the resultant of f1 and f2, what we can do is that we can write the r vector and we will add up all the components algebraically, right. So, we will add both of these. So, 250 minus 106. 250 minus 106 is uh, 144, right. So, we can write that this is plus 144i and we will add both of these. So, 354 plus 106 is 460j and this will become plus 10k, right. So, this is the resultant of f1 and f2 and further we are required to find the magnitude and the coordinate direction angles of the resultant. So, to find the resultant magnitude, uh, the, this is our x, this is our y and this is our z, right. These are the components of the resultant. So, the r magnitude will be equal to r x square plus r y square plus r z square and we will take the square root, right. So, we can find the resultant magnitude. So, our x is 144 square plus 460 square plus 10 square. So, the resultant magnitude is 482, approximately 482 newtons, right. And we can, we need to write the unit with this vector as well, right. So, this is in newtons. So, the resultant magnitude is 482 newtons. And to find the coordinate direction angles of the resultant, we can write that cos of alpha. So, cos of alpha will be equal to r x divided by r 
and we uh, this is not alpha this is gamma it's cos of alpha right so alpha is cos inverse rx rx is 144 divided by 482 so this will give us cos inverse cos inverse 144 divided by 482 this 72.62 so alpha is 72.62 degrees similarly uh, cos of beta will be equal to r y divided by r so beta will be equal to cos inverse and r y so r y is 460 so i will write that this is 460 divided by 482 So, 460 divided by 482, so this is 17.38. So, beta is 17.38 degrees. And similarly, cos of gamma will be equal to Rz divided by R magnitude. So, gamma will be equal to cos inverse and Rz. So, Rz is 10 divided by 482. So, 10 divided by 482. So, this is 88.81. So, gamma is... 88.81 degrees right so the resultant magnitude is 482 and the the angle of the resultant with the positive x-axis is, is 72.62 with the positive y-axis is, is 17.38 and with the positive z-axis is, is 88.81 degrees right so this is the solution of both of these problems